So imagine yourself sitting in the dark cabin of a taxi. You look on the right, you can see pine trees fading into the darkness. You look on the left, you see the same thing. You look ahead, you can see the road slowly rise and then fall into the night sky. For a majority of us, traveling to college is not a big deal. It's just a car ride away or a flight ride away. But for me to successfully make it from Mumbai, India to Lewiston requires the perfect sync of all the forces of universes. <laughs> However, this time, all the forces had conspired to work against me. <laughs> so my flight got delayed by an hour. My immigration at the Boston airport took two hours and I missed my last greyhound back to Lewiston. And here I was, stranded in the middle of Boston's North Station, knowing, what, knowing no clue about how to get back to Lewiston. And the sheer sensory overload was too much for me to handle. The white, green, and red lights flickering at the display board were piercing my eyes. The incessant announcements of trains departing to places that I had never heard of bombarded my ears. And there was a the continuous whirlpool of people revolving around me, moving around me in all directions, seemed to trap me, seemed to trap me in the middle. I could see certain people stare at me. I couldn't make sense of it. Why were they staring at me? Was it the look on my face? Was it my two giant suitcases? Was it the clothes I was wearing? Or was it my skin color? I didn't know what was happening, and all these thoughts were making me insecure. They were, making, they were decaying me from the within, and they were weakening me. After great difficulties, I managed to board the Amtrak. I had commanded my eyes to stay open in order for my mind to take control of the situation. But my eyes lost the battle to exhaustion, and I slept. The next time I got up, my train was already rolling into Portland. My two giant suitcases meant that I was the last person to get out of the train. As I pulled my two suitcases up the ramp to the cab station, the rollers of my suitcases disturbed the bliss night Portland sky. A white light was flickering on my head. And I, and I spot a cab. I request him to take me back to Lewiston. And as soon as the cab starts moving, I do the one thing that every keen traveler does, look outside the window. But something strange was happening. Everything I saw, was scaring me, was chilling my bones, and I couldn't make sense of it. The traffic lights were scaring me, the signposts were scaring me, the lawns were scaring me, the, the sweet, beautiful Portland houses were scaring me. This was strange. I, I knew that I was not scared of traveling alone at night. And that's when I realized that I wasn't scared of Boston, I wasn't scared of Portland. I was scared of being alone. I was scared of being lonely at that night. I, over this day, I had reminded myself that this journey meant that I was moving away from my home to a land that was foreign, a land that will, that will always consider me as an outsider. And that was my fear. I wasn't scared of the signposts. I wasn't scared of those, those stairs. But I was scared of them because I thought they reminded me that I was not supposed to be here. And that was my fear. After 40 dread, dreadful minutes, I arrive at the Bates campus. I wanted this to get over. I, I didn't want someone to scream an invader at me. And I, I pay the cab driver a run back to the trunk and try to, pick, try to pick up my luggage. But I can't. I'm exhausted. My hands give up. The cab driver sees my plight. He walks up to me, opens the trunk, picks my luggage, and drops it down. That's the first time I managed to see his face in that entire 40 minutes. And he smiles at me. I take a minute, I let that smile sink into me, I breathe, and I say, yes, I'm home. Thank you.